Hello, hello. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, and today we are going to be discussing a velocity banking question from someone that filled out a form on my website by the name of Jeremiah. Shout out to Jeremiah. How you doing? His question is, if the line of credit is large enough, should you use it to wipe out multiple debts at once or one or two at a time? So this can be a little tricky sometimes, but here's how I initially get my numbers so I know what I want to chunk at and how much. So like I always say, you got to know your four major numbers, income, expenses, debt, cash flow, okay, cash flow on a monthly basis, net income, expenses, monthly expenses. What I usually like to do is overestimate on your expenses, underestimate the cash flow, so I have a bit of wiggle room, uh, room for error here as well. So let's say I have a, a personal line of credit for 50K. Naturally, my first number that I get is whatever 66% of 50K is, that's going to be my max chunk that I make from that line of credit. To help me get a more realistic number, or a definite number is now I look at your income. If you're only making 5,000 a month and your cash flow is 500 bucks a month, there's no way in hell that I'm going to advise doing a $33,000 chunk. That's going to take you quite some time to pay off with 500 bucks in cash flow. Okay? So that's going to be a little difficult. Now, if your income is like 10,000 a month, your cash flowing like 2 grand a month, that's going to be a lot easier, especially if I use that 33K to wipe out X amount of debt in a short period of time. And then my cash flow is going to go up another thousand bucks from that move. Now I'm at $3,000 cash flow. Now I'm going to pay off that line of credit even faster. Get what I'm saying? So you want to look at your line of credit. You want to look at all your debts. And you want to see, okay, I, got a, I have a big line of credit. Should I really be shifting so much debt? Because you don't want to go into the whole borrow from Peter to pay Paul. You want to make sure that when you are borrowing from Peter, that it doesn't cost you any interest. If so, very minimal. Very, very minimal. So that when you go to pay Paul, I save thousands of interest by paying Paul and I get cash flow so that I offset my borrowing costs from Peter. Does that make sense, Mr. Jeremiah? So I hope that's pretty clear. This is going to be a, like a quick video on you know, whether or not I should focus on one debt at a time or multiple debts. It really just depends on those four major numbers, the, the line of credit space that you have, and the amount of cash flow that I'm going to gain. You want to make sure that there's, an, no matter how much I'm pulling from the line of credit, you want to make sure that there's an interest savings from that move, cash flow gain, and does it beat that snowball every single time. And you also want to make sure that the line of credit, so if I took out that 33K from 50000 you want to make sure you can pay that back, right, within like six to nine months. You wanna be able to zero that out so you can make the next chunk towards the next debt. Keep the rhythm flowing. And you always wanna match it against debt snowball. So if you, if you beat debt snowball by a whole year, a whole two years, that's freaking amazing, right? If the number, if you're, if you're like neck and neck with debt snowball, then you might've made a mistake there. You might wanna reevaluate the numbers. Because if you're, if there's no real like, you know, space between debt snowball and velocity banking, then it doesn't make sense to do all this crazy flip flopping money around, right? It, it's almost easier psychologically to just do debt snowball. But if we want to do velocity banking, and our debt free timeline by doing debt snowball was originally 12 years compared to 30 years, right, like a mortgage. So had a 30-year mortgage, doing debt snowball. You do the math on a uh, amortization calculator, and it shows, 
hey, if you just make extra payments each and every month, you'll have this thing done in about 12 or 13 years. Okay, cool. Now you got that debt snowball number. And then when you're looking at velocity banking and you run the numbers and then it says, hey, you'll be debt free in about 6.5 years. That's a lot better than 12 years. That's half. I just shaved that timeline from debt snowball into half again, 6.5 years. Or maybe you go even faster. Maybe it's four, maybe it's five. You know, the, the typical, you know, range is like five to seven years compared to a, a 30 year mortgage or debt snowball which debt snowball typically is like 10 to 13 years, typically. Unless that person's making a lot of money, then it could probably be like maybe eight, nine, seven, something like that. And if that was the case, then velocity banking becomes two, three, four years, right? So we wanna make sure that we're solving that. So I hope that helps Jeremiah. Everyone else, submit your question on my website. You can fill out a contact form below and you can submit your questions. I'm gonna be doing videos just like this giving you a shout out. I want to get more engaging with you guys. I want to make sure that everyone feels like they're being served, they're being recognized, that you're getting your initial pre-game questions answered so that when you invest and enroll in a coaching program with me or one of my services, that you feel that much more confident to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Hope you have a wonderful day and God bless.